Hi, my name is Ben Ward. I'm a product designer here at Odyssey BMX, and today we're going to go through free coasters and show you what to look for, for what uses you might want to use them for. All right, what we have here is a standard cassette hub. You can really tell just because of the clicking. And when you go to pedal forward, it's really responsive. You know, it's almost immediate, you know, for it to catch on and just start going. Another key thing you'll notice is when you roll the bike backwards, your cranks are gonna to wanna to roll backwards with it. And what we have here is a free coaster. Um, you know, free wheel is the same as a cassette hub, but you'll notice if you look at the cranks here, it takes, you know, it takes a little bit for it to engage and that's what the slack is. But once it engages, it's the exact same as a cassette and you also notice that it's dead silent because there's no pawls inside there dragging. The big key advantage of the free coaster is that when you roll your bike backwards, the back wheel will roll forever and your cranks will never move. All right, uh, these are the internals of a free coaster and a cassette hub. Um, big differences between a free coaster and a cassette hub, you'll notice number one, bearings are quite a bit different size and I'll go through that in, you know, in a bit and tell you why the bearings are different in size and then here's a driver for the free coaster where it's got the driver that's threaded with the clutch mechanism that moves back and forth. The cassette is a lot simpler where it's just the driver and it usually have paws that engage on teeth inside of a hub and when these snap up that's what's creating that freewheeling noise on a cassette hub. This is an older style free coaster hub and I'm going to go through and show you the anatomy of it. This is the axle and this is the cone nut and the lock nut for the cone nut. This is just the standard washer and bolt to attach it to your bike. This here is called the driver and a free coaster driver will be threaded on this back side here. Um, the threads go to this part that's called a clutch. As you can see here, they screw together and that's what makes this mechanism work. Standard uh, unsealed bearing cage, unsealed bearing cage race, and the spring mechanism, which is this little guy here that's covered in grease. This here is called the shell. If you look at the shell on the inside, it may be hard to see but on this side here, it tapers closed and the clutch device would come in the shell and it bites against the shell and that's what drives the hub forward. This is a older internal. This hub has been discontinued just cause we're working on something new. Um, these two spacers here, uh, this is where you would adjust your slack. If you look here, when this is, when you'd be backpedaling. The clutch mechanism moves away from a part inside the shell that's called like a lump. And when you crank forward, this moves forward and this would bite against that lump and that's what would drive the wheel forward. But when you backpedal, it disengages it from the lump and that's where your bike is able to like free coast, go forward backwards without having to, you know, move your cranks at all. So as you backpedal, it, you notice that the part here backs up against these spacers and right now you know if you wanted to increase this which would be increasing your slack you'd go through and remove one of these spacers or get smaller spacers and just mess with it until you were happy with the amount of play you had in it. This is uh, the modern setup it's got the tiny driver you notice the lump has been changed in its design it's made you know to be smaller lighter weight if you look here too you can crank pretty far back before this comes to a stop because the slack in this is set you know pretty large um, and that just means you know a lot more space to play with your feet as you're rolling fakie here is what I call spring pins if you press on this little ball here, it'll go, <laughs> it's pretty, got a lot of tension on it, but if you press on it, trust me, it will go up and down. And that's what puts pressure around the inside edge of this 
which gives a resistance. So when you go to pedal forward, that'll let the clutch move forward on the threads. Like here, there's no spring tension. The, you know, the clutch moves wherever the, it wants. It spins with the driver. The second you get it here, the clutch starts working properly. And that's what the spring pins do for it. This axle doesn't have a spring pin on it. What it relies on are these two springs that sit inside the driver. And the axle goes right through here and the two springs press down on the axle which create its resistance. So you've got the clutch on the axle, you get the springs in the way, and if you can see in there, there's the two springs sitting in place. And that makes it, you know, not totally difficult, but it puts a good amount of tension on this clutch. So it, it wants to stay stationary. As you introduce the, the driver to it, that thing's gonna wanna stay stationary and you know it's gonna move back and forth like you need it to for the mechanism to work. The second you take the springs out and go to rotate it, that thing's going nowhere. It's just gonna rotate with the driver and you're gonna be here for days trying to move forward. So the spring tension is you know, really important for the uh, free coaster to work. The modern free coaster hub now has a 14 millimeter axle, which is the exact same as you know the modern cassette hub. It has drivers that are the same size as your modern cassette hub, so you're not limited that way in any way. One of the only weak points generally found in a free coaster is when this uh, clutch is engaging, it's pressing on the shell and it's putting really strange forces on the bearings. So depending on how hard you are on your hub, um, not really as much peg use as just rolling use and how much, you know, how hard you pedal. Um, you know, peg use can come into it slightly, but bearings tend to wear out in a lot of free coasters. That's always been the number one issue from, you know, the beginning of time. If you look here, you know, this has got a huge bearing on this outside edge because you know, it's got a lot of sideways force being pressed on it and bearings don't like that. You know, they're built for up and down force. But when this is engaging on the, you know, on the hub shell, you know, it can't go anywhere. So it's pressing a bunch of force against the bearing, which eventually causes them to blow out. And that's really the only way that I have seen free coasters be weak in any sort of way. Free coasters can be used for all types of riding, you know, Flatland, street riding ramps. If you're kind of crazy, maybe some trails. Free coasters might not be for everyone. You know, hopefully I've given you enough information here to at least educate you a little bit so you can make a better decision. They're a lot of fun. You can do a lot of other things with them. You know, the change, the way you ride a bike, it's, it's pretty cool.